Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is June 21st, 2018. Now, for this segment, I am going to explore with you some new research that is coming out that is describing a connection between Arctic sea ice melt and climate changes to the Pacific Ocean as described in a new study, a new model study that has recently come out. But before we do, I'm going to look with you at what we've seen so far during recent years with regards to sea ice loss. Now, back in the 1980s, Arctic sea ice extent, volume, and area were at the very least a couple of million square kilometers larger than what we typically see today. And, and well, in, in extent size and area size and in volume, we've lost approximately half the ice we typically see during summertime. And this image that we're looking at now is an image of sea ice extent during late August of 2012 when sea ice extent values fell precipitously and in which losses were compared to averages, average sea ice extents, nearly half of, of total sea ice extent was lost. And sea ice has, has a, a regulating effect on the climate in that ice is is reflective, it tends to reflect the sun ray, sun's rays, and dark ocean surfaces absorb the sun's rays, and both of these different features have differing effects on the climate system. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at sea ice volume and talk about that. So the average sea ice volume from 1979 to 2017 was about 11 to 12 million cubic kilometers. And the average that we are seeing during recent years is in the range of about four to five or six cubic kilometers. And so, so during recent years, we've seen half of the 1979 to 2017 average. But if you look at the long-term trend we, we have seen even more considerable losses when you compare, say, for example, the 1980s with the present day. So, so these, this loss of sea ice has an effect on the global climate system. And recently, a lot of scientists have been trying to figure out how much of an effect, what is the total effect, and, and how much, what happens in the Arctic affects the, the global system as a whole. And what this new study found is that sea ice loss produces teleconnections in the atmosphere and the ocean, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute, um, that result in a rapid warming of parts of the Pacific Ocean and in the tropics. So. Basically, the study, the study in the geophysical research letters found that the effect of projected Arctic sea ice loss on the global climate system is investigated using state-of-the-art coupled climate models. And the study shows that the tropics respond to ice loss within just two to three decades via dynamical ocean processes and air-sea interaction. This tropical response in turn modifies the atmospheric circulation and precipitation responses over the North Pacific. And the fast response indicates that ocean dynamics need to be represented in an accurate picture of the global impact of Arctic sea ice loss. So that is simple words for science. So I'll, I'll try and drill down a bit more. What this means is that sea ice loss in the Arctic changes ocean temperature patterns and 
surface and upper level wind patterns in such a way that result in knock-on effects throughout the Pacific Ocean. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at some of the graphics that were presented in this study to, to give you an idea what kind of changes these models expect. Now, the models that were run included two different kinds of models. One was like a, a slab-based model that looked at different layers of, of the ocean and the atmosphere. And the other model was a, a dynamic full ocean model that uh, looked at more dynamic responses. And so, so this analysis was based on an understanding of, of a comparison between the two models and what the models found. And what they found is that in a rather short period of time, the northern Pacific Ocean warmed very rapidly and the equatorial Pacific began to warm as well and that over longer periods of time you tended to see more interaction between the pole and the tropics to the extent that some of the changes appeared to result in considerable warming of both the eastern and western equatorial Pacifics, Pacific zones in a pattern that just, you know, from an eyeball perspective, appears to mimic El Nino. Now, this particular study compared impacts to events that we've seen recently. So, for example, during the early to mid 2010s, we saw a ridiculously resilient ridge in the jet stream over the Pacific Northwest and, and the Northeastern Pacific zone. And this ridge brought warmer than normal temperatures to the Northeast Pacific and resulted in considerable sea surface temperature warming in this region that um, many dubbed the, the blob, the hot blob. And this hot blob resulted in significant losses to life support within the Northeast Pacific. Now, there is some evidence that the blob was the result of polar warming, uh, which was also a, a knock-on effect of sea ice loss that tended to produce stronger ridges, upper level atmospheric ridges in the upper level winds in this region, which tended to result in prevailing warm temperatures, which helped to heat up this region of the Pacific. And according to this research, this blob itself was, was not an outlier, it wasn't an anomaly. It, it's a part of a trend that we would expect to reinforce over the coming years. Now, the upper level wind pattern that I'm looking at now is from November of 2017, and it's an example of a, a high amplitude jet stream wave. And, and what this study indicates is that polar warming generates a teleconnection or a connection, like a handshake between warming in the Arctic and upper level wind patterns that change climate dynamics that produce more warming in the, northern Pacific, in the northern Pacific. But what the new study has found is that this handshake also creates interactions between upper level wind patterns and surface wind patterns in the equatorial Pacific, which result in teleconnection related warming at the equator. And that this warming occurs over very short time periods after which we see sea ice loss in a 10 to 20 year time frame. And that's something to be concerned about. 